Hello and welcome to another rousing episode of English 112. I'm sorry this is a little bit late. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not at home. I'm on vacation. So things are a little uh, hectic right now for me. Uh, it's a little weird to try and do this from somewhere that's not my bookshelf. This week we're looking at short fiction and you have a variety of essays that are introducing you to what short fiction is. Uh, there's a couple of different things that we're talking about this week. Uh, each specific element is sort of its own part. It's very difficult to separate these things and, and see them as different parts of it. Uh, it's almost arbitrary, but it's still important and something we have to do. So the first of these is theme. And theme is the heart of any story. It is the reason it's being written. It's an answer to a question uh, that's essentially being asked. And it, the writer's trying to figure it out, uh, putting it down on paper, putting those ideas down on paper, and trying to solve them with the story. Also, when it comes to story, we have the thing that makes us read from in the first place, which is character. Right? It's the protagonist, the antagonist. It's the supporting cast. It's those people that populate it that create that sense of immediacy, that create that sense of empathy, and it's the reason why we read. Another important element is setting. Uh, keep in mind that characters are products of their environment. There's also a point of view. Uh, it's whose eyes we're seeing the story through. Uh, as you'll see in the essay, if you haven't read it already, you know there are a variety of point of views that can be used in a story that you know that perspective gives us an appreciation of the events going on. If we have a particular character who we're seeing the world through their eyes, we tend to sympathize with them and we feel what they feel. Of course, we can't forget uh, conflict. It's part of what makes a story worth reading. We need something to be in opposition with some something else, uh, whether that's the you know that typical man versus man or man versus himself or man versus environment type of conflict, uh, even if it's not highly or uh, highly evident. Uh, it's in, especially in these types of stories where it's very buried. You have to really look for the conflict. What's the problem at the heart of the story? There's also plot and structure and form. Uh, plot is just the series of events that happen that take place over the, the course of the story. Typically there's a sense of causality. There's a reason why you know we get from point A to point B. There's a number of incidents along the way that lead us to that logically. Uh, structure is sort of the organization. Think of it the same way we do with a uh, five paragraph essay. Sh short stories also sort of follow that as well. And in the case of form, form is a little different. It's a little subtler. Um, it's technique plus, you know, sort of the, the composition or organization of the scenes, uh, things like that. It's, it's not as obvious as others. And lastly, we have symbolism which is an object that represents something else. It's typically an emotion that can't be expressed through the character. Right? It's something that is representing an emotional state or an idea. For this week, you have five different stories uh, to look at. The first of which is Hills Like White Elephants by Ernest Hemingway, uh, which is a wonderful story. I know I've written about it uh, before in the class, in the forums, you also find uh, in my essays a lot of information about it, a lot of different reasons why I like it. And it's a terrific story. Hemingway is a very interesting author. His style is very unique in that he writes very plainly, very matter-of-factly. You know, keep an eye out on any time he writes that story in a way that has a little bit more oomph or a little bit more style to it when he gets a little bit descriptive. Right? Keep an eye out for adverbs. I, I know in one of the essays, I really make a point that the adverb at the end, because he very rarely uses them throughout the story, uh, is very important. When he says that the man is wait, or looking at the people and they're all reasonably waiting for the train. Reasonably is the key word there. Another story is The Shawl by Cynthia Ozick. This is a terrific story. Um, very good use of symbolism. Uh, especially with the cold and the shawl. Uh, th that's a really good story to look at for that. Um, 
and it is a, a very heartbreaking story. I think it's one, uh, it's one of our two female writers uh, that we're looking at in this unit, and it's it's one of my particular personal favorites uh, among the bunch. Everything Rises Must Converge by Flannery O'Connor. Uh, she was a terrific writer. Uh, her stories tend to have a sort of uh, redemption theme to them. She's a, she was very strictly Catholic, um, and it comes across in her stories. You know, you're looking at, especially in the case with Julian and his mother, a, a relationship that is not working at all. And you can, or one of the ways I like to look at Julian's mother's uh, death or I mean, we're not 100% sure that she dies, since we're left in suspense to an extent. I like to think of it as a death, and I think it, it's a form of martyrdom that has been uh, sort of played at or hinted at throughout the story, and it comes full circle at the end there. Uh, you know, Julian's mother needs to die for him to grow up, essentially. Um, also, you know, keep in mind the way that story talks about race and the way it uses conflict. Um, it's a very interesting story, and it doesn't. It makes everybody kind of look like a jerk. Um, <laughs> I think I had a student last semester who said, "You know, everybody's a little bit racist," and this story is is definitely one of those stories that emphasizes it. Um, it makes you look at yourself in a different way and recognize what a jerk you are at, at times. Because you're not like in Julian's case, he's he seems super progressive. But really, it's the progressiveness is a cause or a result of his mother's upbringing of him, um, and it's really just a, uh, in order to be mean to her. You know, there's even a case we can make that Julian himself is racist. So uh, take definitely take a look at that story and keep an eye out, especially for conflict and symbolism. We'll also be reading uh, John Updike's A and P. Uh, this is an excellent story. You know, keep uh, with this story. It's uh, the theme is very important. Um, we, in Sammy's case, he is the ultimate sucker, uh, is the way I like to look at him. Um, he says at the end of the story, he recognizes how hard his life will be. You know, that's a very important line. He's, he's a guy that pretty much does anything for women. He has this chivalrous, uh, sense of duty, but really nobody cares, you know. Uh, so definitely keep your eye out for the theme in that story. And our final story that we're reading uh, is by me. It's called Galacta. Uh, it's very hard for... <laughs> you know, it's weird that I, I assigned a story that I had written. Um, but the reason I do so is because I want you guys to be able to have access to an author to ask questions, um, you know, when you're reading it or after you've read it. It is a little comforting to be able to talk to an author about their work. I don't know that it solves all your problems or answers all of your questions, but it's a nice sounding board. And, you know, it, I just happen to be a short story writer, so I thought, hey, why not? Uh, and also, because I'm an egotistical, you know, uh, nut job. Uh, make sure you compare and contrast two of those short stories. Take a particular element uh, that I analyze in my essays and approach those two uh, stories and look at them and how they use those elements. Look at how they, you know, how they're similar, how they're different, uh, and try to draw some kind of greater conclusion about it. Don't just say, you know, hills like white elephant and, and uh, everything that rises are, are similar but different, or they use conflict in a similar way but it's different, or something like that. That's too basic. Draw some kind of conclusion when you're doing the comparison contrast, or at the very least, at least say one does it better. That is the easiest way to do a comparison and contrast. You're trying to draw some kind of uh, of conclusion by doing this comparison. So again, don't don't do, don't be simplistic about it. Try to look for something uh, meaningful in your analysis. So if you do conflict with those two stories. You know, you're going to be looking at, yeah, well, they're interpersonal conflicts. We have that, uh, you know, that man versus man. Uh, it's really man versus woman in this case. Conflict. And we also see that it's about, or the reason why there's this conflict, is a, it's about perception, right? 
the two main characters of both stories are in opposition to each other because they don't see eye to eye on something. Uh, there's, you know, they might agree on a lot of things, but there's that 5% difference that they want to argue about. In Julian and Julian Mother's case, they're arguing about, you know, not really, I mean, it is part, the race is part of it. Uh, integration is part of it. But the bigger thing between the two of them is Julian's upbringing, right? The mother is trying, still trying to baby him, and Julian really hasn't been able to escape that. He's kind of a failure because of it. And in Hills Like White Elephants, we have that a similar uh, type of interpersonal conflict where the girl doesn't really uh, want to keep the baby because, or, or I should say abort the baby, because she thinks that's a good idea. She just is saying she'll do it because the man wants it. Um, and they have this very strange relationship. Uh, it's very much about control in a similar way that the Julian and Julian mother's relationship is about control. Um, you know, we can say that Hemingway and O'Connor share a similar perspective on life, uh, that most of our problems are trying to control other people or, or being trying to be in control of other people. Uh, it maybe could be the conclusion we draw. Obviously, you want to make sure you are giving some specific references to the text, uh, maybe quote some lines, whatever you need to, in order to prove your argument. But, you know, take your time with this. Uh, I, I want these forum posts to be as thoughtful as possible. And if you're not taking your time, it, chances are it won't be. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. So that's it for this week. Until next time. Peace.